Hey everyone, it's Chief from Touch Loops here, back with another video. This time we're going to be looking at how to create uh, rave music with emotion. And by rave music I mean sort of bicep, uh, rival consoles-esque electronic music that has a lot of energy and a lot of vibe but also is really emotional and euphoric, maybe a bit nostalgic. Um, all the things that we've come to associate with those artists. Um, and we're going to do all in Ableton Live, uh, Ableton Live Suite. Uh, I'm going to use a mixture of uh, stuff from our Touch Loops packs, uh, Ableton stock synths and sounds and effects, as well as trying out a few uh, external plugins from companies I think uh, are really great and can kind of get you what you're looking for if you're looking for this kind of sound. Um, I should say, I'm going to shoot for those artists, that's what I'm aiming for, but like with everything, um, I'll be moving around the genre a little bit and taking it in directions that I like the sound of. Um, so don't expect like a carbon recreation of bicep or rival consoles, but we're in that world anyway. So let's jump in. So here's my Ableton session. It's pretty simple. We're going to start with sort of the chord pattern that I've written here, and then we're going to develop that through into the full idea here with the beat sub builds and everything. So let's jump into the chords. I'm using Wavetable, which I find is a really great place to start. Uh, just pure sine waves. You can hear the relationship between notes really clearly. It's really uh, quick to load. So that's where I like to start. Um, I've picked a scale which is really easy to write with, I think, this scale mode. So I've turned scale mode on, I've picked uh, A sharp minor, I've uh, clicked scale here on, and now I can see only the notes in that scale, which is really useful for understanding their relationships and experimenting with uh, chord shapes and things. You don't have to worry about moving outside of the key. So I've started on A minor two. So then I've basically written uh, a simple chord progression uh, made out of fifths. Apart from this last chord here. So these are all fifths. I picked fifths because I found with this kind of music, simplicity is key, I think, in terms of the chords you use. You, uh, I started off trying to write sort of embellished sevenths and ninths and things, lots of stacked MIDI notes, you know, all the way up. And when you start to build that out with reverbs and things, it just became very muddy, very hard to identify I think when it comes to the emotional aspect of these kinds of artists, really simple, strong chords really work well. You know, you want to really, you want it to hit you each movement. Um, you don't want it to be confusing in any way, I don't think, or you don't want to get lost too much. I think if it's for real emotional impact, simplicity is key. So these are all just fifths. So we have A sharp, E sharp. Um, then we go down to G sharp two, D sharp, C sharp, G sharp. Then here we've got G sharp. Uh, if that's uh, the, the one, so one, two, three, four, five, six, this is a sixth above. We could have had it with the um, with the fifth like here, but just for a bit of variation, it sounded great just to move it up one. And plus it carries over into the first chord when we repeat again. So there's sort of a nice flow uh, as it loops around. Uh, I, I really love melodies where notes hang over uh, uh, notes that move underneath or above them. I don't know why. I just think it sounds great. So I wrote that. And then in order to sort of fill out the sound, I added a couple of octaves underneath just of the root note. So A sharp and then A sharp two octaves down. Uh, apart from the second two where when we move up to the C sharp, we move back to the a sharp here and then the C sharp here. That was purely um, just choice but here, what I liked the sound of. There's no real th theory around why I did that. So nice and full, really simple.
lovely. So we're spread over a few octaves, but nothing sounds too clashy or muddy, just really solid, simple chords. Okay, let's look at how I built the synth sound uh, now that we have the chords. So I'm still using Wavetable, and I used uh, the matrix within Wavetable to build uh, a rhythm, a pattern. So let's hear what that sounds like first. So it's a really cool uh, rhythm. It's moving through subdivisions and uh, giving us that kind of rival console-esque sound. Um, unlike the wavetable we use to make the chords, which are just sine waves, here I've set both. I've turned both oscillators on. They're both set to um, triangle waves, and they're slightly detuned from each other. Uh, minus twelve cents one way, and thirteen the other. An oscillator one also has a small amount of um, FM here, which we will come back to. Uh, the sub is also one, but it's turned down quite low. So again, we're really spreading and building these uh, chords out across as many frequencies as we can, because I, I want them to sound massive, but I don't want to layer up too many synths. I want one synth to do the legwork. Um, and then here, this is this is where the, the rhythm comes from. So uh, within modulation sources, we have the amp, which is the amplitude shape of the sound itself, envelope two, envelope three, LFO one and LFO two. For this, I'm not using LFO two and I'm not using envelope three. I'm just using envelope two and LFO one. Um, envelope two, this shape here, is controlling the rate of the LFO. So if we go into matrix here, uh, filter one frequency. If I turn that off and listen to the, uh, the chords again, you can hear some movement from up here, but we'll get to that. If I turn this up, we can hear the, uh, the cutoff frequency is being controlled by um, M, uh, LFO 1. The LFO 1 is being controlled, uh, the LFO 1 rate, sorry, here is being controlled by envelope 2. And envelope 2, it's this shape here. So as we go up, it speeds up, and as it comes back down, it slows down. So we exaggerate that, pull this out. You can hear how it changes. It's pretty cool. So I've just got it at the start here. So every time the chord changes, as the envelope goes up, as the, you know, we have the attack, increases the speed, and then ramps back down. And because we set the LFO, oh, sorry, as we set the LFO to um, be locked to the global tempo and not free, it settles down into eighth, eighth notes. So if we play it along with a click. But we can change that. We could change it to say twelfths, sixteenths. to sell. Um, the amplitude also I'm controlling with LFO1, which uh, is just giving it a bit more shape. We can increase the amount of LFO, how, you know, how much the LFO1 rate is affected by envelope 2 as well. So if I turn it off, or minus, it speeds up instead of slows down. If it doesn't, just pause, screenshot what I've done, <laughs> and copy the settings. Because I'm not sure I'm doing the greatest job explaining it. Um, but it's just internal routing. Then we have envelope follower. Now envelope follower is controlling the amount of FM that we set up earlier. So here we have FM classic and modern. Um, I've set this to FM. I've set the amount to the envelope follower. So 
I'll do it. Uh, so the envelope follower is, like I said, it's a gate. Um, it's taking the input signal from wavetable, which we've set as this sort of stuttering thing. And then, then I'm mapping that back into wavetable to control the amount of FM. Um, I can you know, set the gain quite high here, so I get a really good strong signal. And then rise and fall is effectively um, attack and decay. <laughs> It's moving between two numbers, so it's kind of living, like you can see here, the whole thing feels like a, uh, I almost imagine it to be like a vibrating string being plucked, you know. Um, then we have another envelope follower that's being sent to an autopan, because I wanted this uh, same rhythm to spread left and right in the... Uh, in the stereo image. And the way I did that was just an extension of what I'd already done. So I set up another envelope follower that's also, you know, it's taking the signal from the one before or from wavetable, I'm not sure. I think it is passing through this first envelope follower though. So it's taking our same pattern and then I'm setting that to the amount of autopan. So uh, on headphones, you'll really hear the, the movement. And that's really the patch. Um, I then moved it an octave higher. I really want it to have presence. And it's been sent to a couple of reverbs, but we will come back to that in a second. So building on top of this, I went to one of our packs, uh, Ethereal Harmonies, and I found a loop that was in the same key. because I really wanted um, some uh, a voice in here as well. Again, so much emotion within the human voice. It's, it can be so useful when writing uh, emotional electronic music. So I dropped that into a uh, simpler. I then set the start point to just be the end here rather than the whole build up. And then I looped it. Um, and set the occasional uh, one, two, three, uh, fourth above. And then I ran that, as you can hear, well, I, I rolled some of the bottom off and then I ran that through, well, firstly, let's roll it, uh, run it through a vocoder. So this is Ableton's vocoder. I've set it to pitch tracking to get that classic vocoder sound. Um, set it fully wet and then sent those to some reverbs. And that sounds like this. Let me turn it off so you can hear. So the, the vocoder kind of makes it sound synthetic, but it, it has that human shape, which I really liked. Um, as another option though, I have Vocal Synth Pro by Output, which is doing a similar sort of thing, but with a few more features and a bit more character. So same, uh, vocoder here, but also BioVox, TalkVox, PolyVox. Um, it's got some delay, um, all, all sorts of extra little features. Um, but they both are shooting for the same thing. But let's leave it on Vocal Synth Pro for now and move on to the beat. So the beat carries just as much of the emotion as the chords, I think. It has so much power over the way you feel and move. And I think a lot of that has to do with space. So I've loaded up uh, 909, Ableton's stock 909 here. I've replaced the uh, clap sound with a rim shot, um, one of our rim shots from one of our packs. And that sounds like this. So it's that very familiar pattern now, uh, that sort of familiar bicep rhythm. Kind of garagey, um, but lots of space, lots of space for those kick drums to really ring through uh, and hit you in the chest, which is what we're looking for 
It has an offbeat hi hat. And then I wanted to include sort of a bit of a break, which is a huge staple of um, of bicep. Uh, so the way I did that was I loaded up uh, a loop from another one of our packs, reel to reel drums. Uh, if I go show in browser, we can see where that is. So here we are, reel to reel grooves, sorry. It's this, uh, this beat. Very nice. Uh, I dragged it in and obviously Ableton uh, automatically warped it to be a faster speed. And then I, on beats mode here, preserve transients, this top setting here. So it's not forward and back, it's just forward and stop. Set it to 24th and that will shorten the sounds to this. I rolled off the kick drum. And then, as you heard, run it through some uh, hybrid reverb. And it's then being side-chained to the kick drum from the 909 above it. So it's dipping under this kick. So not a traditional sort of break, but it's, uh, it's interesting. It does similar things it fills in the gaps between the main kick and snare and hat um, i also added a little bit of erosion to it which uh, just gives it a bit of noise a bit of grit helps it stand out a bit more and uh, then sent just that break to some delay this is just a standard ping pong delay uh, even this it's the standard uh, pr uh, preset that it loads on i've not touched it at all and that's just giving the beat some movement left and right and then this is the whole beat as a result Sounds kind of spacious, impactful. Uh, I grouped these two together into a beat group by uh, selecting both of them and pressing Command G. And then on that group, I've added drum bus. And drum bus is just giving it a bit more drive, a bit more crunch. You can tune the decay of the kick here with this boom feature, but um, I've left that separate. I've added my own sub bass. So let's hear those elements together now. It's getting there. It sounds a little uh, light on its feet. So let's give it some more weight with some sub. So the sub I'm using here is from Sublab. And it sounds like this. So the function of the sub here, the way I see it, is to really accent those kick hits. So I've used the same pattern that the kick is on, and I'm following the same root note of the chords from above. And then my settings within Sublab are 808 Oxy, and I've set the decay of the volume envelope to be about four seconds. So it does have a really nice long release, but it does tail off eventually. <laughs> and then that sat with the punchy kick drum uh, creates a really nice thick low end. Um, a note on kick and bass relationships, even though there's not much very, uh, not very much going on here, I think it's still important to either choose between having a long boomy kick drum and a small bass note, or a small kick drum and a long bass note. Together, if they're both long, they will clash and sound muddy. But um, in this instance, the kick I'm using, the 909 bass drum, has got really short decay. If I play it again on its own. So if I extend this decay, and then if I play that with the sub, I can hear them clashing, they're on top of each other. But if I shorten it, So the decay is long enough for the kick to still have weight, but it's not tonal enough to be clashing with the, the sub. I could have, I suppose, not used Sublab, gone back into my beat bus here, turned boom all the way up, and then tuned the frequency to the track. So it's, 
as we know, A sharp minor. Here. So that's another option. If A sharp minor is too high, let's see how low it goes. So it goes down to B. So not quite low enough for, hit, uh, for us to hit the A sharp an octave lower. We could instead choose the major root note which is C sharp. Then we use the boom amount here to set the decay. And I don't know whether I prefer that, if I'm honest. Let's uh, see how it sounds with the synth. better. So this section here now is going to become a bit of a build and another real key piece to making I think really emotional and impactful electronic music is dynamics. Um, building up and up and up and then cutting back down into something small. Um, we can do that with uh, the elements that we bring in and out or the sends, cutting sends off to reverb so the sound becomes very dry. Um, but let's listen to how I've done that here. <laughs> So that snap from big to small, I think, is uh, really effective and um, hits you all over again. Even though none of the elements have changed, the feel of them and their presence shifts. So I took the kick drum out just before the drop here. Um, I would also take the sub lab out so that we have the kind of break sonically from all that low end. So when it comes back in, it hits us all over again. But I have these uh, building sounds here as well, which are playing across the, the length of the progression before the drop. So this is the synthetic choir preset from within Ableton. Um, it sounds like this. So kind of doing the job of a, a string part. And that's slowly being sent more and more to the our, our um, two reverbs. That's layered up with a, uh, a brass sound which is also copying the rhythm using a, using a traditional gate method like just, as we discussed before. So it's sidechained from synth sound here, which is our main wavetable synth. So the pattern there is being sent to this gate, which is being sent to this pure, uh, saw pure brass preset, which is uh, an analog preset. And then that's being sidechained to the kick because we don't want things to get too crazy. Um, and they are, again, just the same chords as the main progression. I've then added on top of that uh, a profit preset from the Atoria collection. The maybe I should clean it preset, if you want to know. And again, everything has been slowly sent to more and more reverb. And then the last layer is this noise crash. And then they cut, cut out. Um, this noise crash is just the, the noise oscillator in analog. It's just one less oscillator that's turned on and it's just creating white noise, which I'm fading in. Then that, uh, all those sounds have been um, grouped together with, uh, as we heard, well, as you can hear, like a, a, a gain slowly um, building in. One more thing, or a couple of things, I suppose, actually. We re we tuned the, uh, the kick drum to have this note here, which works really well, I think, actually, maybe even better than Sublab does. But that doesn't mean that we can't use Sublab here for a bit of variation. So we could bring Sublab in when the drop happens. 
and we could pull this boom back as well. So boom amount here. So a uh, quick note on automation in Ableton, the quickest way in the world to get your automation lane up is just to click on whatever it is you want to automate and it will alter. So go on to boom here and then when the drop happens, we can just pull that right down to zero. Let's see how that sounds. <laughs> Again, we can't have both. It's uh, it's one or the other. The reverbs I've chosen. We saw the delay. It's just a simple ping pong. I like to send almost everything to at least two reverbs. Um, the sounds we're using are quite simple. There aren't too many of them, um, especially during this earlier section. So I like to send those simple sounds to a few different textures to really build up some space. Um, I'm using the UAD EMT 140 which is a really fantastic plate reverb. I've got the reverberation time to about two and it's on fully wet because it's a return. And then I'm also using this Valhalla vintage verb, which is also fully wet. And that's just the preset it loads, which I just think sounds amazing. And they sound different, but together they build a really great um, wall of sound. So I'd recommend stacking different reverbs up. Um, it, within Ableton alone, you have a number of different reverbs to choose from. So there we go. I hope that's helped uh, give you some ideas to write sort of emotional rave music. Um, and yeah, let's uh, let me know how you get on. <laughs>